the line, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. all crazy thuds all through the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Better than the uh, clarinet next door. Oh, there's... Uh, I think all, it's a sort recorder. Of, all sorts of things happening here at uh, <laughs> the uh, studio as we kick you off for episode 17, am I right? Yeah, yeah. 17. Eventually, the, we're just going to stop counting. Yeah, for sure. But uh, as, as we approach sort of like small little milestones and things like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> right. Should I leave it or? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Yeah. See, a little knock, uh, knockoff podcast meeting here, kicking off episode 17. Yeah. But. Uh, we're here, we've got, I'm on take three here, leading us off the top two. <laughs> took, about three, took about three starts off the, uh, off the top it's all right, mate. to no get it. Listening. It's uh, <laughs> And across next to us in the studio, there seems to be a recorder lesson uh, happening. I think, we got <laughs> some, um, I think we got some Christmas carolers practicing for the, for the festive season. That's it. All the big one listeners have had uh, Silent Night, Here Comes Santa Claus, <laughs> all, all these ones. All your so favourites. <laughs> yeah. All those family classics. <laughs> it's, we just don't know. Uh, Danny, Danny's the fucking uh, tech guy. Do you reckon it's picking anything up maybe? Or? I don't know. I can hear it in my headphones. But, yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah. Depends on the quality of your headphones that you're listening to this in, fam. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if you're Vinnie Mac over in Medellin listening to it through your little Bluetooth speaker, you might not pick that shit up. Yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's it. a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Miss out on all the fun. Yeah. It's, it kind of sounds like a lesson because it kind of sounds like one person can play and the other person's Shit. learning. Yeah, that's, that's that's a, yeah learning. Pro- progressing on, on, <laughs> on a journey. And, uh, on the journey. We're talking about journeys. Oh, return- I felt yeah. the segue sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you hear that? Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Justin. Uh, Timberlake. <laughs> Justin Hammond returns. Wish I was up uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he returns as a one and only mixed martial artist. Welcome yeah. back, buddy. What's up, buddy? Hey, guys. Listen, man, we're here to break down all things Eternal 22, an event at Southport Sharks two weekends ago that uh, Justin competed at, made his debut one and oh in a points decision, and we're going to try and break down all things fights and we'll talk you through the process. So what? Uh, anything you want to hit up straight up, Danny, or fucking... Did you choose your own walkout music? Was yeah, yeah. Tupac? Yeah, Tupac. Nice. Man. Nice. Yeah, with Tupac. Nice, yeah. man. I was in a, in a shop today, man. I was devastated. I saw a uh, Tupac singlet that I tried on in the uh, in the city today and shit fit, unfortunately, <laughs> man. I'm like, ah, oh, Devo. Maybe next summer. Cop the Biggie Smalls. Cop the Biggie too, Smalls. So, yeah, might have nice. to wear that on the next nice. next potty, just saying. But, it was uh, all a dream. It's, uh, you, you chose your walkout music. Uh, Eternal 22 one, one forty five pound division Yeah So that was uh, 65.8 kilos Which is Yeah Equates to 145 Which is I, I sort of I only Lost like 1.4 kilos In water nice. To get to True. that like, That's all you had to lose Yeah Did you put that on Before you went in Back yeah, into oh, the cage e- Easily yeah yep. When easily. did you um, Have to weigh in for it The day before or? So the, f- the fight Was on the Saturday night At I think fight started at 6.30 and the weigh-in was Friday night at 5.15. Right, okay. Yeah. So you had that night. What did you have for dinner that night? Uh, actually had some sweet potato fries. Just sort of like good, you know, healthy carb. Nice, Yeah. nice. Bang. So, yeah, that was something I was pretty, I was pretty um, like pumped about. It was the whole just m- – Making my body do different things with my diet. Yeah. So, yeah. so over the last sort of eighteen months, I've been really sort of testing, you know, experimenting on myself. Yeah, like first cool. went like vegetarian for almost a year, like eleven months or something, and then like I, uh, so I cut out meat uh, and dairy and breads, and then sort of tried them all individually back in my diet. Right. So I was pretty much vegetarian. And then decided after like six months, I was like, I'm feeling pretty depleted without meat. True, so, true. Yeah, I, d- I had to add some something back in. Um, but it's still like mainly vegetarian. Once you sort of do that, you become... You, you, you know, your sensitivity to the meat, you feel like your absorption's better or something? Or? Yeah, definitely. Um, but also like once you experiment more with like more exclusively vegetarian stuff, you sort of get a bit more adventurous and you can sort of like branch out and sort of go, oh, I can, I can survive on, you know, different sort of meals rather than just having sort of like yeah. pastas and like yeah. all that sort of stuff, getting real, so like making um, pizzas out of like cauliflower yeah. base and stuff, yeah. like all that sort of stuff, yeah. getting different sort of nutrition. So that was cool. Um, but So the weight cut wasn't too hard? No. Nah. Mm. I, 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 I honestly reckon, because I walk around at about 68 kilos yeah. at the moment, 
um, with like training and all that sort of stuff and eating pretty healthy. So 68 kilos, pretty comfortable. I could probably get down to like 61. So really? I will yeah. probably, yeah, probably stay between. Yep. Like featherweight's an easy, easy weight cut. But 61, yeah. I want to try and make that just to see what I'm And do you feel like. like, like obviously, I mean, this is your, <clears throat> this is your first fight in the, in like, you know, the amateur ranks. Is it, um, you know, do you feel like you want to stay at this weight class or, or you you do feel like you'd go lower or... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I'd, 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 I want to try and uh, like cut to 61 kilos, which is bantamweight, 135. Yeah. yeah. So, 61. Yeah. Right, yeah. <sighs> oh, you, you're right. You're... Over, over time, like, if, you, mm. if I cut down to, like, cut down on my meals and actually got down to, like, 60, say, 65, 66 kilos without any water cutting, like, just on my diet, which I can easily do, and then cut, like, a little bit more water. So if I cut sort of, like, two or three kilos in water, you know, then... Oop. Yeah. Look at someone like TJ Dillashaw. He'd be in your sort of wheelhouse as well, cutting down to 135 at the similar weight, walking around and shit yeah, like obvious, that. Yeah, obviously, like, for your first couple of fights, there's no point to, like, drop ridiculous amounts because you want to you, you want to utilise, mm. you know, you want to be feeling good. Yeah. You know, you yeah. don't have any experience in there to, to be, uh, to be uh, like, depleting your body of everything. And, or you, yeah. and you, like, in, like, you speak of your sort of, like, experimental phases and stuff like that, and you did, um, you know, weight cuts for a few jiu-jitsu tournaments. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I believe, like, on one of the early ones, you felt like a real sort of... Um, Massively. ...tangible energy depletion from, from not not having enough sustenance beforehand. 100%. Yeah. Um, but also that's due to like the, the jiu-jitsu tournaments are the same day weigh-in. So you, yeah. you weigh in in the morning and then compete at the sa- on yeah. the same day. And they are spread out throughout the day as well. So you're competing like several times throughout the whole day, whereas you sort of, for MMA, you weigh in the night before and then you've got one little burst of window where you can just let everything out and then you can just be like, as you can just be, fall into a heap afterwards. Like, yeah. you can, if you've got no energy left, and the fight's done. You know, yeah. what I mean? you don't have to like yeah. retain all that energy all day, and then compete for like different rounds, and then different t- like weight classes and opening weight classes and all that sort of yeah. stuff in jujitsu. So you step yeah. step on the scales. You both both guys made weight. Yeah. So yeah. I weigh, I actually weighed in a kilo, uh, half a kilo under. So the weight limit is sixty five point eight. I weighed in at sixty five point three, and then he weighed in on the limit. Yep. 65.8 um, he, he was like That's good Both professional too Turning up for their Was it his debut as well? No he's fought before He's had one fight in XFC Yep um, Which he a was W or No nah, he lost in XFC Because right. he yeah. had quite like A fan base there It seemed almost From yeah. the televised Yeah <laughs> Cast of it Oh man I didn't I didn't even realise Because w- Well actually Firstly when I heard That he had one name I was like this guy <laughs> this Mc, McLovin Mc, <laughs> One fucking name It's just McLovin? Yeah it's Xerxes <laughs> And he was like Obviously you do the, the old Facebook stalker oh, Who's this guy You know You want to sort of like Get at least a, So the first thing I found a out was he, on him Yeah The first thing I found out Was he was a wrestler And he was from Iran He was Persian So He's got all these photos Like on his Instagram Of him And just like the Proper Greco And like Roman Like tights Doing actual wrestling And like all these like links he's putting up and I'm just like fuck this guy's a and he was a blue belt too he was a blue belt in jiu-jitsu right. so I was like all right I'm gonna try and strike with this guy you know um everyone like everyone that I've because we kind of know we like we kind of know people from the same gym and so it was sort of like set up as like a friendly sort of thing but oh, okay when it got down to the weigh-ins we were sort of we were both like ready to go like staring each other down like, Mad like, each other yeah. Yeah. yeah hell yeah man and and that was like the like a fun part about it as well was like you actually get to get in there and test yourself against someone who's, who's also trained and yeah but it's so cool the, st- the stare down moment especially you've seen it so many times on TV basically and it's the only time we'll ever see it on TV I don't plan on having an, an MMA fight <laughs> any time soon well listeners like, we, uh, we need to make mention of something that happened during the week sorry to, uh, to interrupt but uh, <laughs> it seems that um, a little fellow by the name of John Gooden is uh, Swagger Jack and the, the Knock Off Podcast. He started a podcast called the TKO Podcast. And, uh, and I believe he's planning to start it, perhaps. I think it's yeah. uh, not kicked off the ground No, yet, yeah, because I can't find anything about it online yeah, just yet. I, believe but, you, um, I think he mentioned it in an interview with uh, Helwani, but, uh, you know, Pommy commentator. Yes. Yeah, I think he's... Uh, 
But uh, trying to get all up in our shit. Shout out John Gooden if uh, if you want to come on the knockoff podcast, mm, the, the real, real the real TKO <laughs> podcast anytime. Happy to tee up some sort of celebrity boxing match. Maybe you'd maybe you'd eye off then, Bruce, if it was for a good cause. I just think the proof's in the pudding for us already. Like, if you're looking at the SoundCloud, 2.6 2. million plays, man. Like, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> 200,000 plays, fam. Like, uh, what are you going to do? We'll blow up now. That's all. <laughs> it's all Gooden. Come on, Gooden. Like, let's negotiate it's all Gooden, Gooden John yeah. Gooden. Merry Christmas, John Gooden. <laughs> <laughs> we can work and this. a happy yeah, new year. Yeah we, can, yeah, we can work this out, Gooden. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sorry. So... You Xerxes, shout us out. Xerxes shout you out. had had a bit of a following there, and uh, and not in the least. Uh, Dylan Andrews in the commentary box, it seemed, was was quite <laughs> him too. quite a fan yeah. of Xerxes as well. Shout out yeah. Dylan Andrews, King of the Ring. Like, yeah, thanks, it, Dylan. Yeah. I had the commentary yeah. after me; he didn't have my back at all. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we got nothing but love for Dylan, but um, but I think it was probably about halfway through the second round that he started to realise that Justin mm. was uh, yeah. Justin was in this. You were you were tangling him up the whole time. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, like I said, I, I, when I found out that he was a wrestler and he was he was going to try and take me down, I like because I I hadn't been working a lot of striking. Basically, I've been training every day um, and I've been competing a lot too in jiu-jitsu, But I, I train every day in the gi. Um, I haven't had any like cage work. I haven't. I've done yeah. like I've done like pads and I've done some like touch sparring with a couple of guys from Axis. Yeah. And in the like the last two weeks leading up, I was down at Benny Alloway's just doing like a little bit of like sparring and sort of clinch work and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But no no hard sparring, no rounds, no like real practice standing up. So the last two weeks I was like, all right, well, I better try and freshen up my hands and, and just at least get my footwork like trying to move around a bit. But I was like, if all fails, he's going to take me down and I'll be on my back, which is where I, where I work from. Usually like all well, my jiu-jitsu is from the guard, so True. everything's off my back. Um, I've been basically every every like competition I've been working from the guard and just that's where I like to be. It's comfortable for me and I feel yeah, I feel look, good. There. It looked like it, man. Yeah. So like for all for all the non listeners out there too who who aren't jujitsu practitioners. Yeah, guard, break, break this down yeah, for us a bit, Bruce. Guard simply uh, position where Justin would be on his back. Yeah. And has his uh, basically your legs around the opponent's hips from behind, yeah. essentially. Is yeah. that, and the, 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 right idea, the idea is basically if someone tackles you or takes you down, you use your legs to sort of isolate their hips, and then you break down their posture from their hips down with your whole like upper body. Yeah. So that's basically what I was doing there, using the open guard and a lot of like De La Hiva sweeps and ankle sweeps and stuff like that, just to keep him safe. Like. Granted, it was C class, so there's no head strikes on the ground. Um, you are allowed to knee in the in the midsection, and you're allowed mm. to like strike in the midsection. But what else did they say? There's no like uh, rotational locks. Okay, so yeah, so ro- no rotational locks, which is uh, uh, foot locks, ankle locks. So you can't. There's no right. no heel hooks. No it looked like he was going for a heel hook at one point. Oh, nothing. None of those was. Just, right. just he just had his that, well, that was more holding position sort of thing. Well, he was, it, during I was, the fight, I th- I must admit I was up at the uh, the sunny coast. Uh, w- watching the fight online on a computer stream, and um, I was like, "Oh shit, are they going for like fucking nully leg locks there?" Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought yeah. the same too, man. Because it had done well, because there was one point you that you had to speak to the referee, wasn't it? Did he pull you up uh, on something? He, st- he stopped because um, because I had him in the guard, and I had him pulled down, like his posture pulled down with my left hand around his neck, and I raised my hand like that, I sort of like over my head with my elbow. As if to strike the head, and then the ref, as soon as he saw that, and I like instantly forgot because that's a co- like a really easy position where I have control of him, and his head's right in my in my sort of range, so I can strike there. So I had to pull myself back, and the ref had to remind me like, "Stop! You can't! No head strikes on the ground!" Remember? And I'm like, oh, "Okay." So, so that's when I had to really sort of be like, "All right. So what can I do from here? I can sweep him, so get him get him him on his back, or I can try and take his back." And Man, I love in the gi. I love taking the back. That's my favorite position to mm. finish guys with bow and arrow chokes and you know rear naked chokes and things like that. And there's plenty of stuff there. So for me, I was like, all right. Once I got like, okay. So when I got in there, one thing that Benny said to me like a week before the fight was, he goes, don't 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 worry about how prepared you feel because no matter what happens, always in your first one, you're gonna get in there. The bell's gonna ring and your legs are just gonna go. Just expect that. Yeah. Like, don't worry about anything else. Like, you know, you got your ground game. Like, that's stuff that you've been doing for year, like a couple of years now. So that'll be there. But like, 
if something happens, just you just got to be prepared. That you just remember that your legs are gonna go. I'm like, sweet. So I'm like, the whole lead up was just like, um, you know, doing as much mental prep as I could, and then got in there. Lo and behold, as soon as that bell went, I was like, even leading up to like when the ref was like, you ready to go? You ready to go? I'm like, yep. As soon as the bell went, I was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, you know, so you, just your, a realisation. Head space, how was your headspace in the walkout and stuff leading into it? You were, like, what was the headspace there? You were sort of kept it together? Were you composed at yeah, the time? Yeah, like... like um, you, you, sort of, you looked like you were holding it together. Man, uh, like... You're I, very switched on. The last two weeks before the fight, I've been doing a lot of uh, Wim Hof breathing and a lot of uh, deep sort of uh, free dive breathing with a, a guy that I train with, Johnny. Uh, shout out Johnny Trays. He's... Um, done like the Wim Hof course and he's actually becoming like a certified trainer and so I've been doing a lot of breathing visualization and um like lung techniques with him over the last couple of weeks and um man that really really made the difference for me like I was super nervous but then got in there and was able to stay composed more than I thought I, I could um and then when it got to the ground I just I honestly felt comfortable it, it turned into for me it turned into a no gi grappling match because he couldn't strike me in the head and I, you know so it was just yeah I just had to weather the storm because he was a super strong guy but by middle of the second round he was do you think he outweighed you in the cage definitely definitely yeah 100% yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so weight cutting played a more significant part for Xerxes as well I guess yeah yeah, yeah. it was um it was a it was a heck of a fight it seemed fast paced both guys were the grappling exchanges were high paced and I've um Took my hat off to you as well, where you looked, uh, you looked comfortable, and you never panicked on the ground at all. As you say, it, it switched onto a no gi jiu jitsu match for you, and you've done plenty of those now, and plenty of gi matches as well. And it looked like you were, you could see that you had trained there. And I think both guys too in the fight could have benefited from head strikes as well because yeah. oh. you definitely had positions when you had his back where you could have perhaps softened him up. Look to think that yes. rear naked choking in the yeah. second round, things like that, where. Xerxes could have benefited from head strikes as well if you're in positions where... 100%. Uh, when both of you guys progress through to the MMA levels, through the grades and stuff, yeah. it's, uh, like, it was a, a hell of an interesting fight for both guys. I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. And he was a, he was a like, super nice guy, man. Like, everyone was um, kind of like blown up about how he's doing the double bicep poses. But, man, I, honestly, like, that, that height, that's what, when, you, when you're a fan, like, you kind of want to see shit like that. You know, because it's, it builds like a, an entertainment side of it. And it didn't, it, to me, I, he was like, he wasn't disrespectful in, in the slice at any point. Like, he was like very respectful, always shook my hand. First, like when he saw me, saw me at the weigh-ins, he was like, come up to me, gave me a hug. Like, we shook hands. We're like, we're going to do this thing. Fucking yeah. Like, we're both sort of like preparing each other. Like, yeah. And then we both yeah. had these like little smirks on our faces. And For um, the, the listeners who haven't seen the fight, uh, early in the first round, I believe, yeah. um, Xerxes got a takedown on Justin and um and in top position to the crowd did like a double double bicep mu muscle bodybuilding pose which uh yeah I mean you know the the you know the Conor McGregor Nate Diaz fight was was a fucking fun fight man and they they were both talking to each other and you know Diaz slapping him and people throwing up fingers and shit like that and a certain amount of that's that's interesting and, and whilst I don't doubt he was probably you know respectful throughout the whole thing I don't know the double double bicep pump I'm sort of like I don't know I don't know com, com, yeah, com, I got nothing but love Xerxes yeah, I got nothing yeah. but love <laughs> he, had, he had his he had his crowd there and his squad man he's young dude in there having a crack but yeah, uh, look, oh, yeah. And look when you got I'm, Dylan okay. Andrews thanks pal I'm with you man when I'm, you got Dylan Andrews pumping your tyres up like that maybe you'd throw the double biceps yeah, up as well I'm, I'm on um, <laughs> I'm on Basically on board as well, man. You know, it's it's competition as well, but it's good to hear that he out there showboating with things. Some people like that, some people don't. But uh, it's good to hear you say that through the whole time that he was gracious and courteous and uh, wasn't uh, w was a good sport about it as well. So, what do you reckon is the craziest like showboating thing that you've ever seen in the in the UFC or even even like maybe Pride or something like that? What, what do you Anderson. Mean by, what do you mean by craziest? Anderson and uh, Weidman. Nick. Anderson and oh, Weidman. Okay, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that uh, derailed crazy. Anderson hard that moment. Yeah, that's a pretty to, pivotal yeah. moment based on uh, Anderson Clowning. Silver, the uh, 
up there with the greatest, greatest of all, all time conversation. Like, absolutely, he is in there. Uh, there was an article in the Underground yeah. today that said. Uh, so he he was like feigning, like he had his hands down by his sides, mm. feigning like yeah. one of the shots that Chris Weidman had thrown at him had hurt had him. hurt him. Pr- pretending, yeah, pretending, <laughs> and um, and then yeah, the next one proper yeah. proper yeah. took the lights out. It was a backhand. Was it? Was it? An, yeah. it was an enormous left hook, I thought. Yeah, because he threw he the left it, yeah. hook and because Anderson was ducking, it was a like he threw the left hook and then followed with the backhand because because he was ducking each side and so he was countering like one, two, one, like one off each. And then Chris threw the left and then came back with the left hand and then followed with the right hand. Fine. And the left the left backhand just stopped him and stopped him enough. To like touch his chin and then the right hit him. Yeah, oh, and then that. Yeah, yeah and that it was put like him out. That, it was the ding, and you saw the 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 eyes go, and yeah. then the next one was. So like, it was like it was actually re- like, it was fucking awesome from Weidman to notice that and then throw that extra little backhand in there to put off his timing. Mm. Like, does it give you now that you've been in there and made that walk appreciate how good these guys are? Oh, in, in man, there? I've, like, I've just, always they're just monsters, eh? These guys, dude. It's <laughs> fucking. I've savages. always appreciated it, like from from a spectator like perspective. Um, and I've had like I I did jump in the I jumped in the ring at, uh, in Muay Thai mm. like three months after I'd been training Muay Thai in, in Thailand, Thailand. <laughs> and that was an experience. And since then, it's really opened my eyes to like what someone can do with their body to you if you aren't fucking trained. Like it's crazy, man. What? Yeah, it's it's amazing, and definitely a hundred percent gives me uh, an amazing appreciation for what people on that scale can do. Mm. Yeah. Hand to hand combat is a fucking crazy concept when you really sort of like think about it in, 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 in its rawest, rawest element. It's like two people, nothing but their bare hands. Yeah. Like let let's see, like you know, and and like you're saying, there's this insane, in depth world in every component of that. Whether it's grappling, striking, you know, all of the different like disciplines that there are that are this crazy world of belts and like the depth that you can go to in jujitsu, which is, which is one discipline or, yeah. you know, like karate, like one, one discipline, like, you know, and then, and it's like, touch fuck it, man. Touch of death. Like. It's, it's something innately like intrinsic to humans and, and in our DNA, you know, like I watched this fucking crazy documentary last night, man, you got to get amongst it on um, Netflix. <laughs> fucking, um, fuck, what's the name of it? I think it's called like... What's it about? I think it might be called First Contact, but it's basically about this section in, in South America that sort of crosses over the Brazilian and Peruvian border and um, by like the governments or I guess like some sort of like governing body, it's basically like you're not allowed to go in this area because there's still like uncontacted tribes that live there, like... Proper fucking tr- like tribe people from way back in the day, like I've never seen electricity, or never like, seen yeah. anything like that, like and um, they don't have, they don't have Instagram, like, <laughs> and so like well, surely they do, <coughs> and so there's different groups of like anthropologists that like slowly sort of like over the last like ten years, these different groups have been making themselves known, like because there's all these crazy like wars and shit that go on between the tribes themselves but also like people who are trying to go out like drug drug like smugglers and people who are trying to cook out in the out deep in the jungle will just go out there with guns and just like lay everybody out that's like you know just take an an indigenous or whatever take their land and start cooking start cooking coke or whatever it may be and so like they actually get on footage in this documentary like a couple of the first contacts with these people and this there's this one where these two dudes like who are like from this tribe or whatever man and they're wearing basically like they're naked right but they wear this like nike high tops yeah (laughs) (laughs) straight nike it's it's crazy though because one of the first things that they say is they want clothes they don't like being naked or whatever but they've got the whole top of their head shaved like so they must shave it with a blade or whatever that you do the sort of scalping with or whatever and then they keep the hair like in sort of a crown around the fucking rim of the hair like Bilbo Baggins style the fucking <laughs> weirdest haircut you've ever seen and then they have this like waist string that they must somehow tie their dick up into so like all you can see is their like balls nut, nut sack and the and the sort of like is as if you were to tuck your 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 penis into your, <laughs> into your belt line and um 
and then like have no pants, just have a belt line like with with the dick tucked up. I guess it makes it better for hunting or whatever. But oh, your like, balls are still down there though. And then just, so just high school on it all <laughs> all year round. Like nah. Man. <laughs> but um, but like so so there's these groups of groups of anthropologists that go out on the fringes of these areas that you're allowed to go to, and they stay on the banks and shit like that. And so these various groups like they're saying that basically like. You know, once they once they make contact with them, and then they begin because all of these languages are closely related, right? Like they're all different dialects of the same sort of shit. So once they these anthropologists figure out what their language is, and they can get somebody to speak the language, and then they can translate it, they get like all of the sort of like subtitles from these like guys that they've just contacted, and uh, and they're saying, you know, we we want clothes, like we saw white men with clothes, and we wanted clothes, and like all this sort of stuff. I kill, I had to kill three white men once, like we killed them with our bow and arrows, and just the way that they act is like so different to what you're used to because they're not socialized whatsoever they're like ourselves mm. that many like thousands of primitive years ago that's or whatever what, and that's it's what like, people they, fail to recognize today and it's like when someone has like road rage or someone raises their voice or has an argument like that's not ever like we're still evolving and we're still trying to become civil and trying to like adapt to to this modern day and age and how to like uh, like talk to each other and communicate with each other and how to enact like uh, what's the word I'm thinking of like c- basically cooperate and live with other humans and especially now that the population's so big you know that's another thing so you just you can't go around just the funniest thing is this that, is the dude oh, here so no, it's no called shit. um I was it's called first being, contact I was lost imagining. lost tribe of the amazon damn sorry I, i'm um Captain Morgan must be doing it. I was imagining uh, Anglo-Saxon to looking like. Imagine if he looked like a Viking with blonde hair. No, not <laughs> not in South America. We're talking like full apocalypto. Uh, apocalypto, oh, oh, man. Right. That movie's sick. Yeah. Do you know what the funniest thing awesome. is, though, man? We're talking about uh, the evolution of them and things like that. The second that they come there, though, they get through the translation that they want that Tommy Hilfiger polo that that guy's wearing. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? They see yeah. that Tommy. <clears throat> And they're you know, attra- fucking attracted man. to commercial things you know, and be like, like Ooh, really cool. stood out to me in this documentary was like so this guy the guy that I showed you the photo of his his brother they were the two that came across to first make contact and they're sort of like they end up going into these anthropologists camp and like they start stealing their shit like in front of them and, and these anthropologists like can't speak their language but they're like no 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 don't 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 Anyway, so over this process, they get to know their language and then they and then they understand that the anthropologist is trying to help them and shit, like give them refuge from whoever's like taking their lands or whatever. And um, the brother of, of like, you know, one of the two dudes that comes over, he, he meets this other girl that's like at the camp, like from another tribe or whatever. And then, um, and then, so he's like, "Oh, he says you should take her because you don't have a woman, and she she just do, she just lost her man, like, and uh, and she's with a child, but you don't have a woman, so you should take her and fuck her." And it's like just this really like like straight basic yeah. sort of thing There's of no like fair- you don't have a woman, so get get a woman because yeah. you need a woman, like yeah. not not like keep, you know need I going. need to find my one true love, like yeah. you know she just doesn't understand what I want. <laughs> we need and to keep <laughs> this thing here going. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's and, um, yeah, but it's so. You know what's fucking even crazier is then like it's all this fucking commotion and shit and the cameras obviously come in late but this guy's like um, and it's like oh she has to leave the tribe suddenly and shit and she leaves and then he's like fucking if I ever see that guy I'm going to fucking kill him or whatever because like this this dude has come back to some other tribesman like in bed with this chick like so she's basically done the dirty on this like guy who's who's supposed to be like her man her new man <laughs> yeah and fucking and uh, and then so they boot her out, and he's like, you know, fucking, you don't you don't sleep with another man's woman and all this sort of shit. And it's like, oh fuck, there's those like monogamy going back like to those early sort of like instinctive fucking days and shit like it's that. Crazy it's crazy once you break it all down <laughs> to stages, yeah. like like they say, the, there's something the, in us that's like, you know, don't sleep with my fucking woman, man. Like, yeah, you know, it's something, it's something <laughs> in us, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing yeah. that's in us that's like, that's like, if somebody sleeps with your woman, you're gonna fight. Yeah, You're gonna fucking exactly. hand to hand combat. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna see his hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. let me see how the hands feel. Yeah. <laughs> what was that uh, fucking Bear Grylls? Uh, that was Bear Grylls and Marshawn Lynch. The uh, Bear Grylls has got this new show yeah. where he takes celebrities out on like a basically like an expedition where they have mm. to eat something gross and like scale down a rock face or something like that. But who did he? He have goes on? out with uh, Super Bowl winning 
Seattle Seahawks running back Marshall Lynch, and uh, this guy uh, is nicknamed Beast Mode for the way he is on the field. Just a, a straight, straight gangster, uh, African American guy, just a tank, like built low to the ground, runs hard, just a straight superstar. And he is out with Bear Grylls at this canyon, and Bear's asking him to abseil down this thing after he's making him eat some shit <laughs> earlier in the episode, and he's like, "Bruh," <laughs> like straight up, B-R-U-H, like, "Bruh." I know you all mad military vet and all that, but if you keep making me do some stuff like this, man, I'm going to make you see how them hands feel. <laughs> 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 Just straight mad dog at him like, man, you want me to, you want me to abseil down there? Like, get out of here. <laughs> no. I watched one with um, Courtney Cox. Where he uh he makes a he makes a cut he pull they're in Ireland and he pulls this dead sheep out of a swamp and he makes her cut its nutsack off and then the dead sheep's full of maggots so he cuts open the, the Courtney, sheep Co- Courtney Cox Courtney Cox from Friends <laughs> so no one told you yeah, that oh, <laughs> don't fucking do it. and fucking <laughs> and didn't. fills this nutsack with maggots and then goes back to the camp. Puts it in a like jug of water and boils this nut sack of maggots and fucking cuts it open. She has to eat one of them or whatever. But it's just like the fucking stupidest idea. Like, how did she spend all her money, mate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the money they made, all the money they made, she blew it. Why is Courtney Cox having to do that? Why is she eating maggots out of a <laughs> eating dead maggots sheep's ball sack? <clears throat> is that some sort of like subconscious thing to Courtney Cox where it's like, oh, I need some... Maybe, maybe. A bit but of narcissism you know, like, there, like, oh, I need some of them likes right now. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe, I mean? maybe. I'm back. I don't but know, that, allegedly. Like, for her, for her, that would have been a crazy once-in-a-lifetime experience, man. She's yeah, you know, that's true, such hey. a fish out of water who's lived in LA since... She, she was like 24 or some shit when they did Friends. And she would Born. have been... She was like... 18 when she first appeared in that um, Bruce Springsteen Dancing in the Dark film clip and shit. She gets up on stage and dances with the oh, boss. Wow. That was like the the her first sort of thing. Like, and people throw back to that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm throwing around narcissism and stuff, but I'm not mad at her. Like, no, I'm but like she would probably the, be the first to admit that, that that's the life she's led. You know what I mean? Like fucking this like Fifth Avenue fucking Hollywood. Actress and um, and then she goes and does this thing with Bear Grylls where she doesn't wear any makeup. She cries like three times. She has to fucking abseil herself across this like rock canyon and shit. And then they have to they have to abseil down this other icy cliff and like stuff that would be absolutely basic for Bear, mm. but um, but for her so it's bad. like. You know, fucking next level, and she's like, "I have a daughter. I shouldn't be doing this." Like, oh, fucking man. freaking out, man. Like, afterwards, is she <laughs> sort of like, "Oh, I'm so glad." I but did But afterwards, that. yeah, she's like, you know, I'm I'm so much more grateful for my life. Like, yeah, I'm so yeah. appreciative. And I of think this that's experience. probably what you like, like. Do things like that to to sort of. Yeah, I don't think there'd be that much money in doing Bear Grylls' a survival show. Yeah. I think it'd be more a case of like, this is an experience. I'm going to go out with Bear yeah. on the helicopter. Yeah. Here's your 800000 Miss Cox. Yeah. Like, maybe. Yeah, a little know. bit of money in the bank. Yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting. <laughs> Fuck, 800000 is a fucking lot. <laughs> Dude, that, but to that, Courtney Cox? Early, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, early in the 90s, they were doing a million and ep. Million and ep. Like each actor, rooms, each you know? actor, each actor. Yeah, bro. They yeah. were they, oh, easy. They sure. raked it in back then, sure. and then that's early nineties money mm. too. That's mm. like Jeez. probably like getting ten, fifteen now, maybe. Uh, you reckon? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. No wonder probably. Matt LeBlanc fucking aged so hard, man. Like he would have, uh, he would have had plenty, <laughs> yeah. Pl- yeah. plenty of fucking plenty of night. Yeah, <laughs> throw a uh, allegedly behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. Let me say something that you got to say. Just for when John Gooden listens to that, and he's like, "Ooh, I've got an allegation." What's up, John Gooden? What's up, Matt LeBlanc? (laughs) Yeah, Matt LeBlanc. (laughs) He would be a good get. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd have a chat with Matt. What would be your first question to Matt LeBlanc? How many chicks did you? What'd you do with filming, friend? What'd you do with that chimp that you did that movie with? Uh, no, I'd be. I'd say, <laughs> why did you? Uh, why did you agree to come here? <laughs> yeah, that's well, I would. That'd be yeah, the first What's your ask. motivation? Why, why did you agree? What? What? What's, like, you, you're yeah. Matt LeBlanc for fuck's sake. What are you doing here in? Uh, <laughs> you're Matt LeBlanc for fuck's sake. For, <laughs> for, fuck and hell, Matt LeBlanc. Like, <laughs> fuck, man. Matt LeBlanc. Man, the pasties up in here. To get that water. <laughs> J- uh, J- Jamie, can we have a couple of waters? <laughs> Give me some of that water. What are we talking about there? I'm just on these uh, these Sing Tao. These go right. Mm. They're Definitely. actually like the cheapest beer in the bottle, but a Chinese drop that's not too bad. Mm. Also, um, Courtney oh, Cox putting herself in a uh, plastic, mate. 
Made out of plastic. In c- uncomfortable positions. I was talking about... Um, 1903. 1903, <laughs> fucking hell. A few of them would have been drank. There's only, mm. there's only a couple of billion Chinese, isn't there? Yeah, there you go. Shout I wonder, out. like, is, is beer Shout popular out. in China? Beer's popular everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. When there's that many people there, it's bound to be. Yeah. Well, it's, some people are going to have beers, even if it's maybe only... You got beer, wine yeah. and spirits. That's That's what you got. How many? What's the population of China? Over a bill. It's like one yeah, point. A couple of bill. One point, I, I think it's it like one point eight. I thought it was three or something. Wasn't Is it that much? Nah, because it's only seven billion in the world. Hit me with it, young Dan. It's it's um powerful, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Just start swagger jacking hard. Hard everything. All right, so put your put your guesses up. One point eight five billion. Uh, two point nine. One point three five seven. Is that right? That was as of two thousand and thirteen, though. So I can definitely double that by now. Mate, I'm, I was calling out like high twos, thinking it might be in the threes. What am I no, talking no, about? No, no, because the, the whole world population is only uh, seven. Wow. And then seven. You, you've got like one, one, over one billion in India. 1382. In India? No. In 2016, China, China is 1,382,000. Uh, million. One no. billion. Yeah, 1 billion, 382 million, 323,332. Jesus, <laughs> and to think in the, you know what's crazy? Time, it's like you know those changed. those numbers. They they're just numbers. They don't fucking make any sense. And it's like it gets down to three hundred and thirty-two, and you're like, oh, okay, two people. I understand that. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> the rest like, of it's all the, fucking gibberish. <laughs> the rest of it, it's like it's fucking crazy, man. Like it was the same same fucking feeling that I had in New York, or like you know, you get in any big city where it's just so many people in such a small space that you're like, oh wait, we are fucking tiny, man. There are so many fucking people. Does that like, does that make you feel t- uh, smaller than when you're in a place like that, or when you're in a place like how, like oh, I've never been to the Grand Canyon, but if you go to somewhere like I don't know, for me. Like Fraser Island, or like a a big place where there's like a somewhere desert, remote, or somewhere where you're real completely remote, completely isolated, and you just can look out into the distance, 360 degrees, and you're just like, whoa! Like, what makes you feel smaller? Like being in a place like New York City, or all of the above, all of the above. It's just like you know, if if you're aware of it, you're constantly reminded of yeah. of the insignificance of your life, basically. Yeah. You know, like everything we do is so fucking incidental that like the 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 tiny little even even you know, you think like, oh, okay, this person dies and it has a ripple effect throughout their family and friendship group. And I mean, even that fucking even that sort Doesn't of Doesn't really reach gravity of a death yeah. within within that space. Like, you know, we're talking maybe uh, you know, extended Facebook net network yeah, of a couple that, of hundred people, which is a fucking drop nothing, in the ocean. Nothing, yeah. You know? And it's just like that or looking up to space or fucking anything space, like if yeah. you look at the stars one night and you really like try and wrap your head around that shit like yeah. holy shit man dude when i was working on um up at lizard island which is up like mm. 300 co- uh, k's off the coast of cairns and yeah. at night it's like time, a celebrity it is way up. hot spot it is man it, the, the the cheapest rooms for the night was like 1800 dollars. yeah because well, because it's not that well known either so no. it's like a whole bunch of celebrities will go there like the queen stayed there dr phil take a bunch of whores out there allegedly <laughs> <laughs> Shout out dr. Not phil. dr phil man bro <laughs> i've i've actually allegedly heard i've got some friends at work on super yachts who have seen Dr. Phil in some pretty like extreme like paradisical locations with a whole bunch of women, not his wife, like on, on a yacht partying up like a doctor. And there he is sort of like taking the moral high ground <laughs> like like a big dog. All of this yeah. is allegedly, of course, but um, shout out, shout out <laughs> Dr. Phil if you're listening. That is your real name. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely not his real name. <laughs> Absolutely not. What did uh, your corner say to you at the end of the first round? Your your corner too, highly credentialed corner. When uh, you mentioned Ben Alloway's name before, yeah, he's uh, a casual fans. He went through the Ultimate Fighter show on the uh, for Australia versus England. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Australia so the, the uh, jo- uh, George Sotteropoulos and shout Ross- out to my shout mate George Sots. Get on here, mate. George, George what's Sots, up, buddy? Man. We fucking Remember love me? George Sots. <laughs> what, what a guy! Always took the time out to write back to me, man. Fucking George Sotteropoulos. Uh, full shout out. G- give him love. 
He, Greatest yeah. of all time. But yeah, Benny Alloway, that was his coach on that season, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think Benny went to the semifinals on that and then ended up um, getting a few fights in the UFC. But um, yeah, he, he has a gym down at Varsity now. And um, yeah, still training, still fighting himself. So that's good. He's still kicking on strong. Um, but yeah, so it was Benny, uh, my professor, Jason Robig, and uh, like uh, boxing coach, Steve Boyce. Nice. Yeah. So you get back to the corner, what... what you both hang in with the first round, heaps of grappling. Were you buggered at the end of the round? Did you lose your legs like you were saying before? Um, no. Or? like so, Okay, so when I when I first got in there, when the first bell went, when I say I like, lose my legs, it's like Just the, the, the moment end. hits you. Mm. You know what I mean? The moment oh, actually shit. hits they you. They said go. Holy fuck. Yeah, that, yeah they right. said go. And then like, it's like when, you, when you're a little kid and you have a, the, your first running race and the, that gun actually goes off and you're like, there's that split second when you're like, oh, fuck, I've got to run. Like, Great analogy. Man, I used to take sports carnivals yeah. serious as a motherfucker. Oh, and that's, that's, that's how I sort of like, it takes you a couple, like a little bit to sort of go, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, fucking. And then once you, you know, once you sort of like midway through the first, I was like, all right, sweet, I know where I am now. I'm like, I know, I, you know, I kind of got my bearings. The end of the first round, um, the first thing that uh, pr- was said to me was prof- uh, Professor Robig just goes, mate, He's gassing. Your gas tank is way better than his, and like I couldn't, I couldn't notice it in the first round, but in the second round, I definitely could. I could yep. feel him start to sort of like his his like passes and his guard part, like everything, like all his transitions start to sort of like slow down, and be mm. real like lactic acid based, like just one explosion, and then he'd sort of rest for a bit. One explosion, then he'd rest for a bit until he sort of get. So I was like, all right, all I have to do is just wear this guy out and just like take his back, and then yeah, like second round trying to take trying to get the choke and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, that was the, the main thing. And then um, Benny was like, all right, you know what he's going to try and do first up? Just sprawl. Don't, take, don't let him take you down. But he was just quicker than me. Like, mm. he had that explosive power and a real strong guy that just shoot him for that double to get me back down again. All three rounds, like, yeah. He had that uh, a powerful, powerful takedowns on him too. And as you say, he probably... Uh, the his gas tank might have been affected by weight he was cutting. Like he was definitely the bigger bigger framed guy in there, and yeah. that's, that was uh, good that you'd sort of done open weight tournaments as well. So yeah. what, so you got you got to end of the second round, and that was that was your round. Yeah, I think by the end of the second round, like like everyone, like Benny and uh, Jace were just like, mate, yeah, you won that round easily, but you got to you got to finish strong, like. Um, just go How was your gas at that time? At the end of the um, second, man. At that, at the end of the second, I, because I've been doing a whole heap of like uh, lung training and my breathing exercises and stuff, I felt really good. Like I, I was, I was feeling the adrenaline. Yep. Um, but I, I started to sort of like be like, all right, now you're here. Like you, you've, you've gone through. You're in mm-hmm. here, man. Like and you, yep. you're not hurt. You That's know. It. That he hasn't thrown any punches. Like he threw like maybe probably like 15 body punches one one big a couple of big ones like on the takedowns but he wasn't throwing much a few like body knees and stuff while i was on the ground but i wasn't hurt at all and i was just like look you still got your wits about you just just try and like keep your bearings your your jiu-jitsu's you know you're comfortable there so and yeah third round he like took me down again and i just i was like all right he's gonna have to just work your way out of this and up sweeping him again um and there was a few transitions try to go for a triangle but the Shin gu- the shin guards were just... I-, I didn't want to wear shin guards because, one, I knew he was a wrestler and I knew he wasn't going to be throwing any kicks. So I wasn't too worried about, like, checking or anything like that. And, two, I wanted my shins bare for grappling because those shin guards just get in the way. Mm. And I knew having a guard or triangles or arm bars or anything like that is just going to be a, a Had you ever trained with shin guards before? Not grappling. I, yeah. I've done, like, sparring with right. shinnies and stuff on, but I've never grappled with them on. And, like... I, I had this um, thought like leading up to the fight that I was like, I wasn't going to wear them. We were just doing C-class with no shin guards. And then 20 minutes before the fight, they were like, you got to put these shin guards on. I was like, no, I said I didn't want to wear them. And they're like, no, nah, it's the rule of C-class. you got to wear shin guards. And uh. I was like, fuck. Unless you speak to your opponent prior and agree, okay, we're going to do C-class with modified rules, no, no shin guards, right. then you both have to wear them. It's part of the rules. So, yeah, 20 minutes before... The fight, they were like, here, chuck these shin, uh, shin guards okay. on, taped them up. And I was just like, fuck, doing all my warm-up and everything with no shin guards, like rolling around and then like just... Before, Throw a fucking huge spanner in the work. Just yeah. put two pillows on my shins and then I'll be fucking yeah. jumping in there. But, I mean, I was still I was still so focused 
that was the most focused I've ever been for like a, an intense moment like that in my life. I was so focused that I was like, all right, sweet. Just, they're just going to, that's just one more thing. Like I was just yeah, really ready, really trying to be as ready as I could. No matter what happened, I was like, Does, doesn't matter what happens now. You're, you've, everything you've done is done. Like don't try and think about, oh, I could have trained that more. I could have trained that. I was really trying to get my mind into it. And that's mm. basically what I'm trying to, why I'm so driven to do it is because I, I just want to, constantly just test what i'm learning you know yeah. all this jits that i'm doing and you know the gra- the grappling and everything like that i really just want to just see how i go and just t- test the waters and just keep going with it man and i'm really enjoying training and yeah. so i'm like why not why not jump in a c-class fight you know have a few c-class fights maybe jump into b-class and then see how far i can go with it you know what i mean it's for me, I'm really enjoying the training, really enjoying the, the challenge, the focus and the time leading up to the fight and putting all my effort and, and so much into something so physical that I'm enjoying so much and then getting such an amazing feeling afterwards. Like that yeah, moment. I, I wanted to say it must have felt good when they raised that hand. Dude. Yeah, that, what was that I, feeling? I, like? Because I was so stoked that I, I, I got through the fight and I was just so happy that hey, man, that first one's done. Like, now you can, you've got a reference point to go back and train with. Like, because everything up until then is just guesswork. Well, not guesswork, but you haven't got... I don't know what it's actually going to be Proper like. gauge, yeah. Now I've got something like, all right, this is what you're going to be feeling in there. So now when I'm training, I can really put things into perspective. Mm. So when I got through it and the third round was over, I was just like, I was so happy that the th- all this thing that I was working up to, I'd done it. And that was more of a win to me. And then they raised it in my head. I was like, holy... F- fuck, that's right, you have, to make, you have to get a decision as well. So I like, got my hand raised and then I was just ecstatic, man. I was just fucking, I couldn't stop thanking everyone around me and yeah. all the people that had helped me get there on the night, like my girlfriend, um, like Jason, like fucking everyone, all my training partners. It was just, and for the next, after, like that night, I had one beer afterwards. And like, no, sorry, I had two beers afterwards. I was pretty much like, hammered off two beers, two yeah. like mid beers because I I don't hardly drink anyway. And then because I've been doing all the weight cutting and like everything, the adrenaline dump. Totally. Two beers, I was just f- like nearly floored. Yeah. Like said, see you later, everyone went home, went fucking straight to sleep. <laughs> For the next two days, man, because of the high that I was on that night and everything building up to it, like there was so much emotions and everything running into it. The next two days, I, all I wanted to do was just lay down. Yeah. Lay down and watch Netflix and just just yeah. watch just just chill the fuck out. Yeah, because yeah, you've earned it, you know. You've That's like it. fucking so much build up psychologically, physically. Yeah, that's a throwback. That's a throwback to like olden day baddie town. Like, well, it's just it's the same like yeah. feeling that you. It's that. That's <laughs> only a much more positive version. Definitely, but, yeah. but it's basically, <laughs> but it's basically, <laughs> but it's basically the same. You're right as being like really hung over when you've had a huge night you went out and drank like a fucking million beers with your mates yeah, and then the, and then the next day you feel like absolute shit but there's something in you that's like well that was huge so i've earned this rest day yeah and, and i've earned this mcdonald's feed yeah <laughs> it's like yeah you, you hung over I had a piece KF- of shit i had but... kfc the next day and <laughs> i never eat kfc but yeah. i was just like i just want something filthy yeah, because I've been so clean and everything exactly, leading up exactly. to it. Exactly, that's that's a proper reward. But it's mm. it's funny that trick reward when you've done nothing to deserve <laughs> it. You've drunk basically twenty cans of coke with rum, Dude. and <laughs> eaten nothing, gone to bed, and then woken up and feel like you've earned it. Mm. Man, <laughs> two thousand and ten, drinking like rum and coke cans. By the slab. Two thousand and now, got, fam. Got what a, are you talking? Nah, about? nah. Ne- never, <laughs> never drink, never drink rum can. When's the last time you seen me with a nah, uh, with a black nah, rat, man? Not rum can. <laughs> yeah, be, black be, rat. Be, beers only for me, man. Just for you. those who don't know, there's a there's a drink called um well there's a, a brand of rum Bundaberg rum from from Queensland where we're from and they they sell it in a pre mix with cola, mm. and uh, they're known as black rats. Yeah, and black, they can black they can pol- they can turn a bit. perfectly uh, relaxed civil human being it's into a um, <laughs> yeah. to what's also known in the Australian vernacular as a fuckwit. <laughs> Can't do it. Um, but yeah, what um, bringing it bringing it full circle? What uh, what's what's your plan from here? Is is it more MMA? Is it more jujitsu? Are we going to see you? You know, taking on some some different different disciplines to to round out your game or, or what's the yeah. what's the vibe um so for me um i'm i'm definitely still like i'm training jits every day um 
A lot of people don't like people calling it jits, but it's, I'm just lazy. The so jiu-jitsu community jiu-jitsu, don't like jiu-jitsu, that? Jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu don't like jits, but um, yeah. I'm just, you know, it's too hot. It's too hot in Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, That's right. No, I, 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 man, I'm enjoying jujitsu so much, um, learning so much every single day, and it doesn't feel like I'm sl- like slogging my body away. You know, I'm not, I'm not sparring or anything like that. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I have, I have ambitions to, to obviously do more stand up, and a lot more uh, wrestling, um, and just, I, I just want to just keep learning. Yeah. Honestly, it's just it's. I don't. I'm kind of just like not in the, in the frame of mind of like, oh, this is where I want to be. Like, because, like, ultimately, I'm not. I'm not out there to be the next UFC superstar. I'm, I'm 29 years old, like coming up in December, and I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly just do it because I love jujitsu and because I, I honestly believe in jujitsu that it can keep you safe from things like you know, a, a street fight. So, it's just me testing all of that, and, I've, I. <laughs> Started jiu-jitsu because I wanted to do MMA, but in the process fell in love with jiu-jitsu as just on, on its own discipline. So for me competing in jiu-jitsu, there's guys that still compete in jiu-jitsu when they're like, or c- roll competitively when they're 70 years old, you know, 60, 70 years old. Shout so, out Ed O'Neill. Yeah. Al Bundy, black belt. Yeah. There's, there's, oh, I used yeah, to, yeah. Black, Ed O'Neill. Black belt, yeah. yeah. Al Bundy, man. Al Bundy, Modern Family. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Shout out. He's so, a good dude, man. I loved uh, Married with Children. Oh man, that's a that's a pivotal, yeah. pivotal er, shot. early nineties <laughs> potty humor and shit, man. So yeah, de- I'm definitely one hundred percent. Now that I have a reference point for MMA and what it's like to be in there, I definitely think that I can improve my game so much to to the point where I can get a few wins under my belt and and really you know have fun in there and and enjoy it for what it is because the whole process like. Yeah, especially at that weight, at at um, sixty five point eight or one hundred forty five pounds, whatever you want to call it, I'm not cutting it. A, you know, the weight cut's not bad. The training, I'm I'm fully anyway. fully enjoying. Yeah. So, all the ingredients are there, and I've got an awesome community of support around me. You know, like be- between all of you guys, like all sending you love, and and then like my my teammates at Axis and everything like that. It's it's just like it's such a great environment and atmosphere to be a part of so it's like why wouldn't i just keep doing it you know what i mean so yeah mma definitely like i'm not going to aim to go pro or anything like that but definitely you know just keep going with it and obviously if you if you're starting to like get knocked out three four fights in a row you're just like all right well maybe it's probably i should probably save my brain but yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I mean, fucking, that's not what we saw in your uh, in your no. debut performance. It was one and I. It was fucking fun to wa- <laughs> watch you fight, man. Honestly, like you yeah. didn't you didn't look out of place at all in there, man. Like, and uh, and you know, as somebody who's known you for a lot of years, it's fucking it's awesome to to hear you have that have that passion about something and to see it see it come to fruition in that. And it's like, you know, I, I mean, I've, we've all been witness to you know how sort of like dedicated you've been and fucking. Yeah, it was, it was fucking awesome to see, you know, proper professional production and shit like that. Mm. Shout out Eternal. Yeah, like. I thought, like, yeah, that's one thing is um, Cam, the guy that runs it, the promoter. He's a he's a Scottish guy, and he's like he's just as dedicated to doing what he does. Mm. Like he's built this thing from nothing, and he's come from like you know doing shows at PCYCs and 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 things like that to now doing them in this kind of production now signed by World Series of Fighting Global the the big production company so nice. yeah. all the fights are streamed online and there's been a few guys like Reese McLaren who's just fought for the 1 FC bantamweight title he fought he was the um, eternal bantamweight champion in Australia and there's been a few guys that are now fighting for World Series of Fighting and 1 FC and yeah. stuff like that starting to get a name out there so he's built a really good platform man and to have have you know, he structures it really well. So he'll have like a couple of amateur guys and then like up through the ranks CB and then he'll have pros on the end of the card. It gives everyone a chance, you know, the guys that just want to go in there and do what I was doing and just really just get in there and have a go. And then there's the next level guys and then obviously the professionals that are trying to make, you know, some money out of doing it. Do you you automatically go to like B class next because you've had a C class or you could take another C if you wanted? Oh, you you can do whatever you want. Like you can just only fight in C class forever if you want. Um, But I I wanted, I I would love to go up. Like I've I've, um, seen some things where you might give Cody Garbrandt some some trouble. (laughs) 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 I'm talking leg locks. 
Fuck yeah, it. you're saying you don't want to go pro, man. This is like going out to yeah. 200,000 yeah, people. You fucking it's prime chance to yeah. call Connor out yeah. or fucking <laughs> Cody No Love. Like, where you at, Cody? Like, man, no. I like that guy. I um, I can't wait for that fight. Mm. Him and uh, Dom Cruz. I honestly think. Oh man, I hope he gets um. What are you dusted? I'm, I'm going I'm pulling for Dom. You want Dom? Man, yeah. I like I love Dom. I Don't love. Me wrong, I like Cody No Love. He's coming out cracking people, but I think. Uh, I'm pulling for Cruz. I think it might be too much too soon. For, I think, for Cody. Uh, yeah, I think Cody's too straightforward for for Dom. Dom, Did, Dom will read his his punches from a mile. I will. I mean, I could be wrong, that, but that's what I think. You're a great defensive fighter, Cruz. Yes. Did you uh, two oh six? It's rare of me, listeners, to miss a UFC pay per view. I haven't seen two oh six. Sure did, man. You, tell you what, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of and jo- what a card to uh, miss too, I man. Know, I there know. are a lot of there are a lot of memes going around about like ABC fight of the year candidate being all off two oh six, maybe. Um, but uh, but there were some fucking fights on it, no, nonetheless. I remember because I watched a couple of uh, Do Her Cubs Choice. Swanson and fucking Do Her Choice. Joy. Oh, because I watched his last couple of fights, Do Her Choice, the Korean Superboy, and I actually text Bryce like midweek going, dude, Do Her Choice on this fucking card. Backyard fight, hard out. Oh, <laughs> man. Like, and then it just gets fucking lit yeah. up like a cub. Kill a, <laughs> kill a cub. There's a lot of. Uh, Dodgy Insta- Instagram practitioners out there now, man. So you can just type in like hashtag recently, and then people just have the finishes up there. So I'd seen like I've seen a yeah. good bunch of the footage. That fight with Swanson and uh, Duho Choi, absolutely incredible slugfest. They're calling it in the uh, fight of the year awards. They're calling it round of the year and fight of the year candidate with like strong merit, basically too. So I'm thinking. Uh, what next for both guys? Neither loses for credibility, but. I think the star of the night, Cowboy Matt Brown, was an unbelievable fight, but Max Holloway stole that shot. Oh, I don't think so, man. Do you know who I think the real star out of that, that fight was? Kelvin Gastelum, man. Kelvin. Puts away oh. Tim Kennedy in the third round. Like, who the fuck saw that coming? Not me. Not because me. I, I thought Kennedy would dust him. Uh, and pretty, then Kelvin gets his walking papers like, see you later, mate. Thanks for missing weight seven times. Mm. And then he's just like, uh, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Well, done. Yeah, and uh, who was the lightweight on the undercard with that spinning groovy Lando man, Lando <sighs> Venata? So okay, that was his see sec- that fucking kick, man, dude. Did that you see the replays of that on go, Instagram? Edson oh, Barbosa Terry. Oh, dude, do, do yourself a favor, go back and watch his debut. So that was his second fight in the UFC. Yeah, his El first, fi- yeah, his first fight was against Tony Ferguson on debut on two weeks' notice because he was supposed to f- supposed to fight Khabib back in July, and All I was right. in, I was in Japan watching this, and I was like bummed that. Khabib had to pull out, but then they were like, "Oh, Groovy Lando," and I was like, "Oh, fuck, here we go!" Like this guy's gonna get slaughter. To, yeah, Lando the slaughter. I li- like it has fucking um, Daniel Cormier, Patrick Cummins spec. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen that fight. <laughs> oh, oh man, man. Um, but yeah, Lando like has him on the ropes, has like um, El Kukui in trouble, and then like the most one of the I reckon that's probably one of the most exciting fights of the year candidate as well, and then Kukui finishes him in the second round with a Darce choke or something or a Bravo choke. Mm. And then I was... But from then, from Finishes what Tony I... Finishes Tony Ferguson. No, no, no. Ferguson no, finished Ferguson him Ferguson in the second round. Him. But uh, Lando Venata had him hurt the whole way through up until that point. Like, yeah. it was a slugfest, was man. Lighting him up. Fuck. And then, so when they announced that he was fighting again on this card, I was like, I was really excited. And it was on the prelims, like the fight pass prelims too. So it was, it was all free. <laughs> Bang. What's going on with uh, Pettis? Where does he go now? Oh, does he man. go back to 55? That star mm. shine and power of him is uh, well and truly gone yeah. now. Yeah, it's he's just back such to a shark tank, out. man. It's it's hard for a killer out there, That's you know? It. He's, uh, Poor guy. He's fought all of the A-list Got A lot of extracurricular well. activities going on as yeah. well by the sounds of it. We shit. were only talking on episode 16 about his fucking... Bentley and his rolls and shit being I'm, set alight in his driveway. Like, that's got to be some sort of distraction I'm, on I'm you. I'm calling for Pettis to move camps full time, get away from somewhere, uh, get away from Milwaukee, get Milwaukee. away, take somewhere, go to a Jackson's or up to Farras or something like well, that. Well, he's Re- been really training. Like a, he's been training at. Um, reinvent himself a bit. Who, who did I see photos with him? I think it might have been with. Uh, he's with Izzy, who does the, the right. wrestling coach. Yeah, with uh, Jackson Wink. Yeah, Why was but he was with someone else. I think he. I think I. I also saw him with Farras as well. Really? Yeah. Good. I, I'm. Well, Pettis had. Uh, he looked like a video game character there for a while, beating people. Just tap Ben Henderson. Like he was submitting people. He got an armbar against. Well, some the Showtime other kick, too. man. The yeah. famous, the famous Showtime kick. That was in Bellator, right? No, WEC. WEC. Yeah. But like, 
Yeah, it's it's, it's obviously. Where's Benson Henderson now? Yeah, oh, yeah. Owen two in Bellator. Like, come on, yeah. Shout out Bendo. It's uh, it's it's like anything, you know. It's the changing of the guards. We yeah, saw yeah. it when John Jones came in and cleared out a whole bunch of vets. Like we saw it, you know, when when Conor McGregor came in and and cleared out a bunch of people that you were talking about goat status and shit. Yeah. Like, um, John Jones tapped Dan Henderson this week. Yeah. Did he? Got him. Yeah. Arm triangle. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Rockhold <laughs> called him out, eh? For yeah, another grappling and match. And I, I don't mind that one bit. Hell Fuck yeah, yeah, man. Get that shit going. I'm man. all for it. Dab- Good on Rockhold. Who do you take in that? John. John? Yeah. Straight grappling? I'll take John in fucking. He just has a knack for winning that guy, I man. <laughs> yeah. like, Dude, he, he, he win fucking everything. Yeah. Like, you just put but, him in, he's one of those freaks. But yeah. But do you know. Kimura. The, like, the, <laughs> the, the, the difference is, Hendo is like. Maybe six foot. Massive height difference. Yeah. Um, Luke Rockhold is six three or six four, and yeah, John Jones is six boy. three, six four. Like they're pretty equal mm. stature. The only thing is the limbs on John Jones is per- is are like perfect for uh, grappling because oh. the leverage that he has out of his out of his limbs, like out right. of his legs and his arms, just give him that massive advantage. Just same as the striking. Do you know the how his body is put together is is perfect for hand to hand combat. He's got a real short torso and real long legs and real long arms. True. So, yeah. Oh, he does. 84-inch reach, I think he's got. Yes. He's a fucking savage, man. Mm. I just I just hope he stays the course and we we see him in uh, in June, July this year. Mm. Next, 2017. Yeah, so next, 2016. Year. next year. <laughs> next year. Next, in two weeks' time. <laughs> How quickly did this fucking year go, though? Blink, gone, man. Gone. 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 <laughs> this isn't the end of year... Uh, Episode though, you know we're going to hit with that Christmas special, listeners. Yeah. We got the Christmas special coming up, but uh, this was a this was a Wednesday night special with with Justin Hammond. It's been awesome to have you on uh, once again. Thanks, boys. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for joining us, Bruce. Couple of quick shout outs. Lovers in the air for Knockoff Nation. We want to give a shout out to uh, yeah, good mate uh, Dave Chickzilla. <laughs> in, in, engaged and Benny, previous knockoff guest, both engaged in the last couple Congrats. of weeks. Shout, oh, shout out to them. I didn't know Chick yeah, Dog had as well, lo- but yeah. yeah yep. Shout oh, out. Well, he's going to have to change his shout Instagram out Benny name and Chicken. now. Isn't he? Chicken the plunge, old Chickzilla. Go yeah, get it. <laughs> no. Anyway, guys, we'll get come at you boys. next week. Chris is coming home soon. We'll hit you with that Christmas special. Fucking love yous and leave yous. Peace. It was.